today I am all about mint from the garden. Three different recipes to show you and we're going to get started right after this. Hey garden maters, welcome to Corner Homestead. So like I said, today we're doing all mint. I've got three different recipes I want to show you how to make using different mints from the garden. Now I have the mint that I bought when I went to Lowe's, which is my spearmint and of course my chocolate mint. So I went out and I picked just enough that I think I'm going to use for today, maybe a little extra. But with the spearmint, we're gonna make a delicious spearmint iced tea. Couldn't be easier, show you how to do it. And I'm also gonna do a spearmint tincture. Gonna be good for so many things and I will tell you exactly what all it's good for when I go to make it. With the chocolate mint, we're gonna make a delicious cookie recipe. I think you're gonna like it. So let's get started with the very first recipe which is our spearmint iced tea okay so when I make my spearmint tea I just use my electric kettle it's okay if you don't have one just use a regular pot of water okay so I'm going to take my mint and what I want to do is get about four or five bunches of mint that's good now you will see a lot of people when they make their tea they will just crush them to release the oils, break them, the stem and all. I find that it is a lot better to remove the leaves from the stem. You can use the stems if you want, but I just think this is better. There we go. Now, I'm gonna take all of these the best I can into my hand. Make a tight bunch of leaves. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut them. This is gonna bring out the most flavor. And then, Give them a smack with your hands to really, you can smell the oils. Oh, it's so good. Gonna squeeze them. You wanna bruise them up. Treat them at your worst. Then we're gonna go ahead and just put them right into our water. And believe me, we want it all. Now the reason I do this in my kettle is so that it can, I can just boil it while it's in here. If you have it in a pot, you're gonna boil it in the pot that you have it in. But for now, we're gonna let this sit for one hour. The water will change color just a little bit, take on that green coloring, but that's a good thing. So while this infuses for an hour, let me show you how to make the spearmint tincture. Okay, so to make a tincture, basically you're just going to need a jar. I'm going to use a little jelly jar. We're going to fill this with our spearmint. You want to crush the leaves and fill them, fill the jar to release the spearmint oils. And then you fill it up with a liquid. Now all tinctures are made with an alcohol. If you are not one that wants to use alcohol, you can substitute it for apple cider vinegar. I will be using the alcohol. And just about everybody that makes the tinctures with alcohol always use a vodka. So I've had this bottle for a very long time. 
but it never goes bad. You never have to worry about it going bad. It's alcohol, it lasts forever. So basically, fill up your jar with your mint, pour in the alcohol, make sure you get all the air bubbles out, keep filling it, and then we wait, we let it set. While I'm filling up, I'll tell you the health properties of spearmint tincture. Okay, for the spearmint tincture, it's pretty much the same thing as if you're making your mint. I don't want to use the stems. I'm just going to take off the leaves. And you want to try to get enough, of course, to fill your, your bottle. Okay, so spearmint health benefits are so many. You can, it, it helps with vitamin A and iron and manganese and folate and vitamin C, potassium, so many good things in it for you. It contains antioxidants and antibacterial properties. It will aid in digestion and it re relieves digestive and stomach ailments. It will increase your nutrient uptake and, and possibly to help treat your IBS, which is irritable bowel syndrome. So, I mean, there is so many good things about spearmint. It, it will help with either even throat infections, they say. So, it will also help with heart health and blood pressure. So, that is all good reasons for me to want to do a spearmint tincture. So, now that we've got all of it off of the leaves, you want to do the same thing. You want to bruise it just a little bit. You can beat it up. Just bruise it. You don't have to cut this. You just want to bruise it. And then we're going to put it right into our jar. And like I said, we want to get in as much as possible. And this, I believe, is going to be perfect for it. Could probably use a little bit more, but it's okay. That will be plenty. I do believe that will be plenty. Like I said, I could use a little bit more. This will be fine. Okay, so now that I have the jar filled, I'm going to go ahead and take the alcohol. Like I said, if you want to use apple cider vinegar, that is perfectly fine. And go ahead and fill it up. I'm going to take a knife and just go ahead and go down into it and make sure it's like if we're canning, just want to release the bubbles, get that vodka to go all the way down into that jar. Give it a little stir too. And then fill it up a little bit more if you need to. That should do good. Go ahead and put the lid on. we want to give it a little shake just a little bit of a shake and that's all we need to do for now so we'll go ahead and put this into a pantry you want to put it into a dark dark area and you're gonna leave it there for at least six weeks the vodka is gonna take on the mint flavor when you go to taste this it should just taste like mint you can open it after six weeks and taste it if it's still not as strong in mint flavor as you like, just leave it in there for a little longer. If it needs to be filled a little more while it's sitting, you know, give it a periodic check, periodic shake. If you need to fill it with vodka or your apple cider vinegar, make sure you do to keep it topped off. But you can leave it in there for at least six months. Now, if you leave this for six months, it's going to be extremely strong. So. Like I said, you want to give it a periodic check. See if it's the consistency that you would like. After six weeks or six months, however long you decide to keep it into your pantry, then you want to get it out of here, strain it, and get it into your permanent tincture bottles. I will put the date on the top of this just so I know that today is the day that I did this. So that six weeks from now, I'll know to be sure to taste it. Don't forget to date it. In the pantry, she goes. And I'll see you later. So I bought my bottles on Amazon. I'm sure if you do a search for any kind of the eyedropper type bottles, 
that's where you're going to find them. This kit actually came with 24 labels, two different sizes. You get three of the very little stainless steel funnels, one very long eyedropper that you can actually fill your tincture bottles with if you need to, and 12 of the tincture bottles. Each one of these bottles is the darker glass, as you can see, which is the best to use for sunlight purposes. You don't want any light to get to your tinctures. And of course, each one also has an eyedropper. So this kit with the 12 bottles, three funnels, one large eyedropper, and 12 labels. I think I paid $10 for them. Okay, so my water has been sitting for an hour. It's got a very slight green tint to it. Not even sure if you can see it. So now I'm going to take my tea bags. I make a half a gallon of tea and I use three tea bags in my water. Just going to put it in there and then I'm going to brew it just until it boils. So the great thing about the electric kettle is within a couple of minutes, it's up to a boil. So you can see this will boil over very, very quickly. Just going to go ahead and turn it off now because it's going to continue to boil up. Let this sit for 10 minutes and then we'll strain it into our pitcher. So this is just a half gallon pitcher and I put a little bit of sugar in. Yeah, I know. You don't have to put sugar in it just what I prefer and I also like to put in a couple of limes and I use my little strainer just so I don't get any seeds or anything like that into my pitcher here we go a couple of limes now you fill the tea kettle back up with a little bit with more cold water just so I can fill up the rest of my half gallon jug. One half gallon of beautiful spearmint iced tea. Mm. Nothing better. I have a pitcher with an infusion strainer in the center of the pitcher. And you can put anything in that little basket. So I do do that as well. And it's great on very, very hot summer days. You just take the spearmint and put it in there with a little bit of lemon or lime or put it in the refrigerator, let it infuse. The longer it infuses, the better it tastes. And believe me, spearmint cucumber water is, oh, it's the best. It's just the best. But I do like my iced tea. Can't go wrong. And yes, I'm being a sissy today and using a straw. <laughs> so, iced tea is made. The tincture is infusing for six weeks or longer. Let's get to the very last recipe, the chocolate mint cookies. Okay, so the first thing we need is, I'm not sure how much it is. Um, they, it, the recipe calls for 25 grams of mint leaves. I am going to use my chocolate mint and the first thing you want to do is make sure you don't want to use any of like the spent leaves you just want to discard those use the good ones so I'm guessing about four tablespoons of mint leaves but I would think that if you want to add more to it you certainly can because it's just gonna enhance the flavor of the mint. And like I said, this is the chocolate mint. So I think it's going to be quite delicious. So I'll put all these into the bowl. Okay, so I put I put quite a bit into here. I didn't really measure it. I just broke it up and put it in, but I think this will be plenty. And like I said, you want at least four tablespoons. I think probably, uh, well, I know I've got a lot more than four tablespoons in here. 
maybe six or eight. So now I'm going to add a half a cup of sugar. And what we want to do is make this into a paste. In order to do that, I guess you could put it into a blender, but I'm going to use my immersion blender. And yes, it's stained from doing tomato sauce, but it's okay, it's clean. So we are just going to pulverize this until it turns into a paste. A little copper would be nice. It's spitting the sugar all over the place. So what I want to do is try to put some plastic wrap around the bowl. Just so it doesn't kick the sugar out on me. There we go. Now we'll work it into a paste the best we can. Okay, it still has a long way to go, but now I'm going to add one stick of softened butter. I'm going to cut it up a little bit to give it a head start. And we're going to continue to blend it. If you have one of those bowls with a hole in the middle, I'm sure you've seen them, the mixing bowls with a, a lid and has a hole in the middle, it would be perfect for this, but... We use what we got. Okay, so I have to tell you that even with the immersion blender, it's not that easy to make this paste. But nonetheless, it does do it. And this is what you have once it's made. Okay, now we add one egg. Go ahead and mix it in. And we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I'm not going to measure it, just going to guess. Now, if you wanted to put mint extract into it, you could. And of course, if you already have some of your spearmint tincture, which is an extract, you could add a teaspoon of that as well. Next ingredient is one and a half cups of flour. I'm going to add in a little bit at a time. Now before I add the rest of the flour, I'm going to add one quarter teaspoon of baking soda three quarter teaspoon of baking powder. I'm using a little one quarter teaspoon and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Get it mixed in and I'll add the rest of my flour. And the last ingredient is one third cup of chocolate chips. And I wish you could smell it because you really can smell the chocolate mint. Mm. So that is it for our dough. Let me get out the baking dish. Okay, so we want to take these and you want to just gonna roll them in little balls. I got parchment paper on my baking dish. Okay, so now that they are on the tray and they're complete, we're going to put them into the oven. 350 degrees, we're going to bake them for about 10 to 12 minutes until the edges are slightly brown. 
you're supposed to put them on your baking dish about two inches apart. I didn't do that, so I know they're going to go together, but that's okay. They're still going to be delicious. Oh, God, they smell so good already. Okay, so while the cookies are baking, I want to give you one other idea that you can use your mint for, whether it be your spearmint, your chocolate mint, your pineapple mint, any mint at all. A great thing for the kids, if you are making your own snowball flavors, you would take the mint and put it into a little pan of water with a little bit of sugar, or you can opt in to use um, a sweet and low or equal or you know something to that nature if you want to keep it low sugar you know let it come to a simmer on the stove let it boil just like I did with my teapot you would just boil it and then turn it off and let it set you want to leave it sit for as long as possible you can even infuse the water ahead of time before you put the sugar in and decide to boil it when it is cool Add a little bit of green food coloring and you have your own spearmint or chocolate mint etc snowball flavor now of course you would add the green food coloring only for the color purposes but you can do that with any of your herbs if you want to do anything like that now of course the Spearmint tincture that I made earlier that will be ready anywhere between six weeks to six months You can also use that as an extract in your baking It's gonna taste so much better than that store brand stuff. I'm telling you and I think our cookies are done So let's get them out of the oven So how do you think they're gonna taste, oh my gosh. I really wish you could smell them. Mmm. 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 -mm. Oh my goodness. They are so full of the chocolate mint. You would have thought. that you put mint extract in it, which I did not, but the flavor of the mint, the chocolate mint is, oh, it's indescribable because it is so natural. It's not that fake bottled stuff, you know what I mean? Oh my goodness. It's choking me up, it's so good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. And I haven't even gotten a chocolate chip yet. These are the most delicious chocolate mint chocolate chip cookies you're ever going to find. They are soft. Oh my God, ain't nobody going to get none of these. Nobody. Mmm. <laughs> mm. I'm about to lose my mind. <laughs> Along with my mint tea, I'm in heaven. Oh my gosh. Now, if you are not a lover of mint, then no, I don't suggest you make these, but I am telling you, if you like mint and you like chocolate, you are not going to be disappointed oh my word they are my new favorite cookie so when you taste them you are going to be able to tell the difference between the chocolate mint I mean if you have bought mint extract in the stores and then you go to take this from the natural chocolate mint plant oh, you're gonna know exactly what I am talking about when I say you got the artificial and you've got the pure, pure natural. It's like if you buy pure vanilla extract in the store, but if you go to make vanilla extract as the vanilla beans, there's a big difference. This is a huge difference. 
and it's so good. I, I, you're not going to be disappointed. So the mint tincture, which is also an extract, the mint iced tea, mint water, mint cookies. It's been a long day, but it is all so good. So thank you for being with me. If you have stuck it out through the end of this video, I thank you so much. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with other mint-loving people. Mint-loving garden maters. So please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And until next time, I love y'all. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you on the next video. Oh my gosh. Cream de menthe at its best. Mm -mm. So it might have took a little time to mix up that paste. I'd do it again. <laughs> mm.